Hola. Hey, we're going to make a quick video, and I always say this the same way. It's always quick. It ends up being a lot longer than we want. But we're going to make an astounding video on the Fifth Amendment. Now, we know the Fifth Amendment is part of the Bill of Rights. We know the Bill of Rights is the first ten amendments to the Constitution. And we know an amendment is a change to the U.S. Constitution. But the Fifth Amendment highlights very specific rights that we have and we're guaranteed these rights, and they're extremely important, and that's why we're going to take time to break them down. So let's start by getting our paper ready, because the paper being ready is a big part of making these notes. And, you know, you'll notice when we talk about the amendments, a whole lot less pictures and a whole lot more writing, but this is a great time to, to do the reflection part that comes with these notes, because um, we're really trying to make connections to what these are, to how they impact you as a person. And so bear with me, um, a little more writing than normal, but that's okay. Sometimes we need that. So let's start with paper. We're going to fold our paper just like this. I call it hamburger style. You call it whatever you want, but fold it like a book. And here's what we're going to do. Do something really crazy. We're going to take about one finger here. I'm going to fold it over just like this. Now, I know it's already getting crazy. I promise you, it's going to work out, okay? Everybody with me? Now, I get the paper opened up like this. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to open the paper back to here. We're going to fold it. I'm going to open it up again. I'm going to fold it just like this. I'm going to fold it again just like this. Let me get really crazy. I'm going to do it one more time. Holy moly. Looks like a, a really long rectangle. Now when I unwrap this thing, I'm going to have lots of available spaces left. And that's okay. We're going to use them. All right. So don't panic. Stick with me here. Now this is what we're going to do. We're going to take the first two blocks and then we're going to make a line all the way across. Just like that. And then we're going to come right down the middle here. And we're going to go just like this. Split them up. And then I'm going to go over to the right, not the left, but the right over here. I'm going to draw that line one more time. You track me so far? Looks kind of like a T right now. Now I can go ahead and fill these in. These lines look like a like somebody's abs, my abs, my six pack. Actually, I don't have a six pack, I have a one pack. Okay, come back over here. Do it again. These are a little bit longer because I'm going all the way to the center line. Okay, you got that. Now we magic here. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, and you got one big one. Right. Let's start with the title because titles are important. This is the Bill of Rights. Now, all these videos we're doing on the Bill of Rights, we're going to title every one of them because it's a continuation of the last video. Instead of doing them all in one shot, we're breaking it up into multiple videos. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and center this, what I call. The Bill of Rights. And because it's continuation, I'm writing the word continued. Yay! Now, Bill of Rights, once again, I know we've talked about this before, but it's an important term. And I don't want to forget it. I want to stand out the page. So I'm going to add a little kapow box to it. I'm going to add a little yellow to that because that makes it all better. Remember, yellow makes us stop and look at things. It's supposed to be designed for, for caution. Hey, look at me, look at me. Doesn't mean you're a coward to wear yellow. That was an old thing people used to call you yellow. That boy's yellow. It means he was a coward. We don't see that anymore. 
I guess people don't want to shame the color yellow. Okay, Bill of Rights. Now, in case you don't remember it, I know I already said it once, but you should remember this every single time. When you think of Bill of Rights, you should think of the first 10 amendments because that's really what we're saying. Look how I'm using this line. I'm trying to keep all the writing above this, this line that I didn't fill in. And this is my little think aloud cloud. And while I'm thinking about that, an amendment is what? What is a amendment? It's a change to Constitution, right? So if I want to go ahead and put this over here in this corner, these are changes to the Constitution. And I know that's tough to wrap your mind around sometimes, but think of it this way. Say you're 15 years old and your curfew is 10 o'clock. But as you get older, your parents, your guardian, your grandma, whoever's in charge at home, they start to amend that curfew to where, okay, you can stay out till 11 o'clock. Okay, you're a senior, you can stay out till midnight or it's prom. Sure, you can stay out till 4 o'clock in the morning. When they make an amendment, they're making a change to their rules. And that's really what an amendment is. It's just to change the rules that were set up in the U.S. Constitution, okay? So, let's go down here. We're going to get really specific because today we're only going to talk about one amendment. There's lots of stuff going on in this amendment. So, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to write in big block letters. And you can do this however you want to do it. I like to make it nice and pretty. It's the Fifth Amendment. And I'm going to put this in my Kapow box too. Because I want there to be no doubt what we're talking about today. I want this to stay off the page, because when you look at this page, I want you to know, hey, we're talking about the Fifth Amendment. Not the Fourth, not the Sixth, but the Fifth. Okay, and the Fifth is special, because when we start talking about the Fifth, even the Sixth and Seventh Amendment, we start talking about some of these amendments, we're really talking about your, your, your personal rights when it comes to um, um, the legal process. How do we protect you in case you're pulled over by the cops? How do we protect you if you have to go to court and you're put on trial? How do we protect you from being ripped off by the government? There's lots of things that we're going to list here. And we're going to begin very, very, very top here by talking about the first one. You cannot be imprisoned. That means put in jail. You cannot be imprisoned. without due process. Now you might ask yourself, what in Jumpa Jehoshaphat is due process? Well, due process is a real simple term. When you think of due process, you really probably should think about uh, this idea of fair procedures. Or, um, um, fair procedures and trials, actually. So basically, this is a, a, a fancy terminology for um, you're going to get your day in court or you're going to be processed properly in the sense that um, you're not going to be thrown in jail without knowing certain things or, or without having access to certain things or, or being able to contact a lawyer or, or, or whatever it is. Uh, you can't be in process without due process. There's certain things the police have to do in order to make that a, a, just, um, a, a just trip to jail. So when I say just, I mean with good cause or fair or whatever the case is. Okay, so when you think about this, I want you to reflect a little bit. Cannot be in prison without due process. I've already given you a couple. But when we come back later on, 
I want you to think of a positive example, positive example of how this might help you. And later on in the sixth moment, we're going to focus on the negatives, all the bad things that could happen. But today I want you to focus on a positive thing. How has this grown into a specific right? What would that right look like? And, and you can talk about this with a partner or whatever, but let's come back to this later on because let's do the other ones. And these will make more sense about what you can put down. All right. Let's go to the next right that you get from the Fifth Amendment. It's protection against self-incrimination. Now, I'm going to underline this word self-incrimination. Now, if you need to look that up or you need to figure it out, you can put it over here in the margin. Or there's a space down below that you can use an extra space where you can go ahead and add extra information there. And, and maybe some of the information, like a, a footnote that you would use to explain that vocab word. And, and another word you might want to learn is self-incrimination. It's, it's a vocab word you should probably know for, for life. This basically says this, if you are pulled over by the police, you don't have to admit to a crime. You don't have to say something that's going to get you in trouble. You know, years ago, there was a guy uh, named uh, Miranda who um, was arrested in the state of Arizona. And, and what happened was throughout the process of his arrest and, and he was taken to jail, he admitted to certain things that got him in even more trouble. Well, unfortunately, he was not very savvy or didn't know a whole lot about his rights. And because he was not informed of his rights of self-incrimination, that his lawyers took this court case all the way up to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court case found in Miranda versus Arizona that the police have a responsibility to inform people of their rights when they are arrested. So whenever you watch a movie and somebody's getting arrested and they read you your rights, you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say and can and do in a court of law can be used against you. That is coming back to this Fifth Amendment right and this idea of self-incrimination. So I want you to think about that a little bit. And when we come back to it later, I want you to go ahead and take the time to give an example of what that might look like. Once again, lots of pretty colors. And if I'm going a little fast on anything, hey, just take it back, review it, listen to it again. Um, sometimes I get going and I got a lot to say, but I want to make sure I don't leave anything out and I have a short amount of time. So that's why sometimes I get going real quick. Okay, let's go to the next right. Say, so no, you are all keeping up with me. You can't have property taken away without just compensation. Now, I underlined the word just and compensation because um, those aren't words we necessarily use all the time in our, our normal language, especially at, at high school level. But when you say just, we're talking about good cause or, or reasonable or fair. When we talk about compensation, we're talking about money. We're talking about reimbursement, cash, cold, hard, you know, greenbacks, whatever you want to call them. Compensation is what you get paid for a service or, or property. Say if you sell a car, you get compensated for it. If you go to work, you get compensated for it. If you clean your room, sometimes you have an allowance, you're getting compensated for it. I underline these because if those words really throw you off, I want you to remember, use this bottom space down here and make some notes, special notes that would help you with these words that are underlined because they aren't normal words we use every day. Here's what this right means. 
the government can't take property from you without just compensation. For instance, there is something, if you drive along the highway, sometimes you'll see giant signs that say en de, uh, eminent domain. Well, the government can actually take your property if it's in for the greater good of, of the people. But they have to pay you just compensation. They have to pay you fair, you fair market value for that property. So if they want to build a new highway and it goes right through your farm, the government, if they really, really, really want it bad and they can show a compelling case as to why it's for the greater good and it's the only best option they have, then they can legally find a way to take your property. But they have to pay you for that property. They can't just take it. So that's something that's really, really uh, um, frustrates a lot of people, especially if they've had farms and, and, and property that are gobbled up by the government. Um, but it is part of our Constitution that there are certain scenarios that can happen, but you got to be paid fairly for it. Uh, you can also have uh, um, other situations where you're, you're having property seized. You aren't always going to get compensated for it. Say if you are a drug runner and your car gets impounded, and they take your car, you're probably not going to get paid out by the cops for that. They're going to take that car, and once they're done with it, using the evidence, they're going to eventually sell it off and, and, and use it to go to whatever fund, the donor fund they have or whatever. But property taken away without just compensation, that, that's, that's a real right. So later on, when you're talking with your buddy, your partner, your friend, your BFF, your bromate. I want you to think a little bit about what that compensation might look like. Okay. Now we got two more, two more dandies. So you'll be fine. Stay with me here. Serious criminal charges. Serious criminal charges means if you're really in big trouble, they must be started by a grand jury. Now, I don't know if you know what a grand jury is. I don't even know if you know what a jury is, but a jury is a group of people who decide somebody's fate in, in, a, in a legal proceeding. So say, for instance, you're watching a movie or a TV show like Law & Order or something like that. There's about 6,000 reruns of it. The second half is always the court case, and the lawyers are talking in front of a group of people in a box. And they're trying to convince them to vote one way or the other, and then eventually what happens, they come back, and they will... Um, um, they will give a verdict. They'll say either guilty or not guilty. Well, a grand jury is different. They don't decide guilt. What a grand jury does is they look at all the evidence that's presented to them by a prosecutor. And these people generally meet in secret. But what they do is they look at the evidence and they decide whether you have enough evidence for a possible conviction. All they are is a sounding board to make sure that whatever crimes you're being charged with, there's enough evidence to really uh, be worthwhile to drag you through the, the whole events of a trial. And if the grand jury comes back and says, I, I don't think this is going to happen, it doesn't mean you still can't be taken to court because sometimes these lawyers are very, very determined. But it, it does mean that um, probability wise, you're probably not going to get convicted because they didn't show enough evidence to make the grand jury believe that you could be convicted. So grand juries are pretty powerful in the sense that they either support the idea of a prosecution, putting you in jail, or they look at the evidence and say, there's not enough there. You better go back to the drawing board and figure it out. So that's what a grand jury does. That seems complicated and seems maybe unnecessary, but the reason why we have grand juries in place is to keep things from happening that are frivolous, that, just, that are too little or trivial. If somebody is accusing you of a crime and they don't have any, any evidence to back it up, remember that claim evidence reasoning? 
they will do the reasoning part. They will look at the claim, they will look at the evidence, and they will say, okay, this is not a reasonable charge. This person is not reasonably going to go to jail. So reasonably, they probably shouldn't be charged. And it, it, it saves a lot of public humiliation and, and time and, and effort. And it, it's a good thing. Okay. The last item here. This is a big one. You can't be tried. When I say tried, I mean you put on trial. I'll underline that. You can't be tried twice for the same crime. This is actually called double jeopardy. Okay, and, and what this means is real simple. When you have a crime and you are put on trial for a murder, um, if you are found not guilty for that crime, you're not guilty. They can't come back a week later with more evidence and do it again. I mean, the, you're, the prosecuting attorneys have to, they have to either get rid of, um, they have to either, you know, if they think they're going to lose, they can just say, hey, we're, we're going to dismiss the case right now and, and try to do it later on. Um, but they cannot, if you get found innocent by a jury, then they cannot put you on trial a second time. They can't just keep trying and trying and trying until they finally get you. It doesn't work that way. Now, you may commit a crime in state jurisdiction, and the same crime might be applicable in federal jurisdiction. Technically, the state and federal both can prosecute you if it's the same crime and both of them have jurisdiction over the area. A lot of times, they will defer to the one who can really give you the, the worst penalty, depending on the crime. Um, so there are cases like that where you can be tried twice if you fall into that, that very unique category. But for the most part is if you are put on trial for a murder or for theft or for assault or whatever it is and you're found innocent, that's done. You walk away, you're finished. There are tons of movies where they, they show somebody who gets away with murder, but later on they find the evidence. They're like, he really was guilty. Well, it doesn't matter now because they're off the hook. And this keeps people protected or maintaining some personal rights because it keeps shit from just being picked on by the government over and over and over again till they get what they want. Other countries don't have this, and this is kind of a big deal. All these things, all these protections are things that other countries just don't have. And that's what makes our Constitution unique and the rights that come with being in, in America very, very special and unique because, like I said, the rights of the accused are really important. And that's something that's a mainstay of our, our Constitution. So anyway, let's go back to the big picture. you got the Bill of Rights, Fifth Amendment. Bill of Rights' is first ten amendments changes the Constitution. That's what an amendment is. And the Fifth Amendment specifically says you cannot be in prison without due process. That means they, they, have to, they have to treat you fair. They have to go through a process in order to put you in jail. You can't be in there for unlimited amounts of time. You, you have to be charged within so many hours of, of being uh, um, uh, put in jail, that type of thing. You're protected against self-incrimination, which means you don't have to admit you're guilty to the cops, no matter what they say to you. Now, you can if you want to, and sometimes it's better off to, to just tell the truth because you're going to get a lighter sentence usually. But when people say they played the fifth, it means they, they don't want to expect they don't want to get themselves in trouble. Uh, sometimes if somebody's a witness on the stand and a lawyer's asking them questions and they don't want to answer the question because their answer could actually get them in trouble, they'll just say, I plead the fifth. Because lying is also another crime. That's called perjury. That'll put you in jail for five years. So self-incrimination is, is, there's lots of examples of that. Um, your property can't be taken away without paying you fairly for it. Uh, serious crimes, really serious crimes, typically have to go in front of a grand jury. Sometimes not, but typically they do. And you can't be tried twice for the same crime. That's called double jeopardy. So all these are contained in the Fifth Amendment. 
take a few minutes with a partner or by yourself or do whatever you got to do. And after I've gone through them all, see if you can come up with your own example. And maybe it's the same as what I said, and you're just recalling what I mentioned. Or maybe you can come up with your own example. It's even better. So there you go. And by the way, any of these spaces down here, this is for extra notes. If you want to make some definitions or some footnotes about something that we mentioned up here that uh, you don't have room to, to make notes of in the spaces. That's it. Thanks a lot. Good job. Wonderful work. And we will see you some other day.